Hey guys, what's up? This is Stephen Sanido and today I'm gonna show you how you can mount a digital camera or a small mirrorless camera onto your phone gimbal. This is the Xeon Smooth Q. I won't be talking about the specs of this gimbal today or the specs of my camera, the Lumix LX7, which is used in taking this video right now. But instead, I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna talk to you about the mount that I made so that you can adapt it into this gimbal. Right, so let me show you. First is we have to remove this mount, cell phone mount. Actually, there's a screw inside, but I already removed it. So I'm gonna unscrew this one and remove this. Next up, the mount. So this goes right in here and now I'm screwing it. There she goes. These are my magnets. This is the accurate amount of weight that's needed for the camera to be balanced here. And now we're installing the camera. The mount of the camera is quite on the, on the far left side, so it's positioned here. So I'm mounting it now. Now it's tight. I'm gonna let go. Okay, there it is. It's almost balanced. Now the next axis to balance is this axis, the front and back. So if I turn on the camera and wait for the lens to retract, oops, now it's already balanced in that axis, front and back. Actually, you can always adjust this one. You can move this forward or backwards depending on the camera that you have. If you have a camera with a longer lens that extends farther to the front, then you're gonna need to push this to the front like this, okay? So it's up to you. You can also adjust this one, the angle of this one. To make it flexible, I made it adjustable. Now it's centered. This axis is okay. This axis is okay. The last axis to balance is the vertical axis, this one. As you can see, it's got, it's heavier on the downside, so I'm gonna make the plate go up. Let's see what we got here. Oops. I think this is acceptable. This is already acceptable. But it might introduce some shakes or vibrations when we're using it because the motors are a little bit stressed when it's not so balanced, even if it's just a bit like this. So as much as possible, I'm gonna move it a little bit more up. Okay, now it's top heavy. So since it's top heavy and it's quite really, really quite clumsy to adjust it from here, I can adjust it from here. I'm gonna lower the magnets a little bit, just a little bit. Right, a little bit more. Okay, now it's balanced. This is a perfectly balanced gimbal, right? When you position the camera like that, it stays like that. It doesn't, it doesn't go backwards or tilt to the front. It stays as is. So let's start the zoom cue. Don't press. And there we go. No vibrations here. So here we are. We're gonna take a sample video for the selfie mode. It's an auto. <laughs> okay, so selfie mode is four clicks. One, two, three, four. There we go. And here we are. Hello. So that's the selfie mode. And returning to normal mode. One, two, three, four. Okay. That's the locking mode. So as you can see, it's perfectly balanced. The motors aren't stressed. Once again, this is 290 grams plus a couple of 120 maybe for this and for the plate. It's quite light, maybe from 70 grams to 90 grams or 70 to 120 grams. Uh, I'm not sure. But if it's perfectly balanced, then no problems with that. One thing you also have to make sure, don't forget to lock the screws. Because a while ago when I did that pan and following mode, I did that selfie mode, I forgot to tighten this one, so the whole unit just Whoa, went shit. like that, and I was like, ah! <laughs> I'm gonna get some videos, so see you guys later. Hey guys, we're back. Now, let me give you a rundown of the pros and cons. So the pros are you'll be able to use your digital camera or your small mirrorless cameras with your smartphone gimbals. You can have bigger sensor. If you're using the Sony RX100 then you can have a one inch sensor. The cell phone has a one third so it's too small. So if you want more dynamic range you can use your 
bigger mirrorless cameras on your smartphone gimbal with this setup <laughs> so that's it that's the point of this plate that I made so let's talk about the cons well it's a little bit wide can you see how wide it is from here to here so with this setup you won't be able to take um, close-up photos like by the wall type of angle on the on the right side of the camera you have to be doing it from the left side of the camera second it's quite heavy you're carrying the camera the gimbal plus the camera plate that we've made roughly around 600 grams yeah it makes you tired <laughs> so my advice is that put your setup in a tripod and use the tripod vertically like this so that you have a counterweight on the other side that way you'll be able to hold the unit in the center and it becomes a lot more easier with that and you can shoot boom shots be very careful with that when when you're in around many people the setup is quite time consuming well i'm quite used to mine now i've been using it for two days from around five minutes from complete disbalanced order i set it up for around just a minute or two if you're gonna use your phone you just have to stick it in there and it's balanced well this is gonna take a little bit more time but I think it's worth it if you need the extra light absorbing power of the bigger sensor of the camera so that's it for the pros and cons I'm telling you guys um, this is quite easy to make you're only gonna need vertical plate horizontal plate and some arms over here actually you can use anything you can even use chopsticks for that <laughs> and some magnets I prefer magnets because you can always add and remove weight and move them ever so slightly for micro adjustments see you next time Peace. Huh.